Hello there, folks. Rick Barry here with another Facebook Live on this lovely whatever day it is. Okay. We are very fortunate today to have Shauna and Jenna Felly with us. Okay. From the, uh, you guys are from the Summerlin office. That is correct, right? Yes. Welcome. Go. All right. All right. You have, have some wonderful uh, top producers, mother and daughter team. Love it. Okay. So tell us a little about yourself, how long you've been doing this. Maybe start with you, Shauna. So as a joke, I tell people that I got into real estate on a bet because my husband didn't think I could do that, but that's not true. Um, I actually started in 2009. I've been in real estate for 13 years. I actually had another agent that worked out of the Southwest office that was working on a team. And she asked me to go along with her when they were doing BPO. So we were doing BPOs, going into these houses, taking pictures. And she was doing it part-time. She went back to her full-time job and asked me if I could help her. So I sort of worked with her for a little while. And I decided it would be more beneficial if I got my license. So I got my license and I just took off. Started doing BPOs. What year was that? That was in 2009. So in 2009, when I started, I only knew short sales and REOs. I called myself, you know, like the short sale queen. I didn't know what a traditional sell was. In fact, the first time I ever did a 30 day close and I was like, wow, you can get paid in 30 days. You don't have to wait like three months or six months. So it was a different market way back then. Um, and so because I was new, I tried to take as much, you know, education that I could take. I tried to get certified, did my CP, what is it? CDPD short sales and uh, foreclosure certification. So that helped me a lot from when it first started. So rumors were we were going to get what short sales back with all this pandemic. And I was like, I'm ready. No, I'm just joking. I don't want to. <laughs> That's <laughs> They're hard to do. Nobody wants to have to do a short sale, but it was, it was good. I got to where I could help somebody because there were some really sad situations where people oh, yeah. were going to, you know, have to move out of state and, you know, they had their house. It was, you know, no equity in it. So um, there was some good things that came out of it. You know, if you could help somebody, so that sure. was good. Yep, awesome. Yeah, I mean, the market. I you know when you start back then, right? With uh, and by the way, they should be called anything but a short sale, right? Because they take forever. Oh, yeah, right? oh, that's short about never, it. Never, never could understand that why they're called short sale. And then I, I actually, when I did get a, busy a couple years later, um, I hired my daughter to be my transaction coordinator. So she helped me a lot. She's very creative. She helped me design my brochures, anything that I needed on that end. And then I'll let her tell you how long she's been a, uh, in real estate. But we became a team in 2019, just nice. as everything went crazy. <laughs> right. So, yeah, the world yeah. went crazy. But but the business is a lot more fun doing it traditionally like this than it is doing short sales and REOs and all oh, that. Crap. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, and, uh, you know, you know, 2008, 9, 10 was like, I'm a lawyer and all I'm doing is bankruptcies, right? That's what it felt like. <laughs> yeah, I remember the pie charts that Forrest would do and I wished I would have saved one because I think at one time it was like two to 3% traditional and everything else was short sales and foreclosures. And then, you know, years passed and it was like, I would look at that chart again. It was like short sales and REOs were like, what, 1% and everything else was like a 97, 98% traditional. It was interesting to be in that market to see how that changed. So yes, totally. I can say I've been around enough to see the market change. Oh yeah. Yep. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> all right, Shana, thank you. All right, Jen, how about you? Tell us a little about yourself. How long you've been doing this? All that good stuff. So I, I started helping her probably in about 2010. I would like to said, I would just do flyers, um, maybe a little bit of paperwork getting ready for her. And then when I finally got my license in 2016, um, everyone at the summer lawn office said, you know, why now? And I was like, well, I'm, I'm helping her more and more. I might as well get paid better for it. So <laughs> I started off as an individual agent. And then, like she said, in 2018, I, I told her, you know what? I'm going to go full time. All my kids are going to be in school. And then the pandemic hit. And then I was homeschooling three kids. So it was uh, quite a shame. God bless you. Actually <laughs> been full time real estate. So. Yeah. What's it like? Uh, that must have been crazy, right? Like I, fortunately for me, I have my only one left at home is a senior. Well, he'll be, he's a junior now, but he was a sophomore, but they did the homeschooling almost immediately for high school, which was great. Right. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I, I mean, that must've been crazy homeschooling three of them. Right. 
It was three. And my, I had a kindergartner that you had, I had to sit in the same room with him and I was getting taught the same lesson. So I would have my laptop and he would have his laptop and I'd be doing work, just watching him, making sure he was doing his work. I am Sam, Sam I am, and I hate green, you know, that kind of thing. Yes. Yep. That must have been fun. You must have been ready to do this. Uh, at the end of the day, knock your head off. Yeah, I can hear yes. it. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. It's a lot like dealing with your clients. No, I'm kidding. I'm joking. All right. Right. So. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Jenna, you've been in the business since it was kind of like leveled off, slowly appreciating. So you've never seen, well, you saw the other side working with your mother, but, but weren't uh, licensed during that time. So you got a good taste of what, from the bottom of the basement, all the way up right now, we're at the peak of the ceiling. I'm not going to say we're at the peak of, of pricing, but let's put it this way. I think we've seen a lot in the last four years, right? Properties values have basically doubled in four years in Las Vegas. Yeah, it's interesting. We've had clients that have sold or bought a home and then something changed. They got relocated six months later and we're thinking, oh my goodness, how are they going to make a profit of it? And yeah, there's never been a problem, especially like within this last year, they bought it and ended up having to sell it. And we're like, wow, the prices, the values of the homes went up so much. It's crazy. Right. Yeah, it is crazy. It's a great time to uh, own real estate. People always ask me, what was, what's the best time to buy a home? I go five years ago. But since you can't do that, right now. Right. Jenna also, she didn't say that, but, you know, when she got, when I, I wasn't really using her at the very first couple of years, but um, when she wanted to become an agent, because I think mentoring, I've really liked to do that. I've mentored a couple of agents. She got on with a coach um, that I, you know, helped her to be the best assistant that she could be. But, you know, on the side, I would sort of be listening to how she was, you know, helping her. And I tried to take you that, but Jenna really did help me get organized and do time management, which I was terrible at. Terrible. <laughs> That's one of the things that having that. And I, I find out very early, I mean, you know, doing real estate, it can be fun. You're meeting different clients um, all the time, first time buyers, seasoned sellers. But I was like, I, I enjoy having somebody with me. So like I was out previewing houses by myself and I was like, God, I'm, not, I'm not really having that much fun. I want to, you know, be able to discuss and talk about. So that part of the team relationship, I, I love. I mean, that that really helped me bloom a little bit. Well, and, and it's your daughter. So you guys, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, right? She's your partner. She's your daughter. She's your partner. She's your mother. Hey, this is a beautiful thing. <laughs> It's a boundary we have to, you know, be careful with, but we are totally different, even like the business part of it. You know, I feel like I'm very expressive. I like to talk a lot and she's totally opposite. She's very analytical. So, you know, it, it works really well. It it's a nice balance. balance. It's a nice balance. It's a nice balance. Yeah, I can hear that. Yeah. Well, and plus, you know, someone's genesis, like my, my two, my, my oldest is 26 and he is like, when it comes to the computer, social media, same with, mm -hmm. they're all way better than you and I, Shauna, for sure, because yeah. they, they grew up with that. That's why we have more expressive from our age group, because we had to talk, like, you know, now they can email and, and text and social media. And so it's a lot, it's a lot, uh, it's a whole different time. So it's a good mix when you put the two together. That's true. That is technology. That's one thing about real estate I've had a hard time with. I said, if they change one more time, I am done. If they change that, but you just have to be willing to change um, right. when they change the systems because it's always evolving and new technology is always coming. And I really do feel like the technology that has come about, and even with Berkshire, you know, they, they change stuff all the time, but it's better. You know, I remember we had AdWorks and now we've got this icon. You know, I just, I just think it's ever changing real estate. You just have to be willing to change with it. The only constant is change, is one of a great philosopher once said. It wasn't me. I wish I, I wish I said that. Well, I just said it, but I didn't say it yeah. first. <laughs> All right, cool. <clears throat> All right, so tell us a little bit about how you do your business. Like, how, you know, like is it mostly repeat and referral? Do you, you know, prospect for certain things? So, how do you guys get it done? So, um, you know, that's a good question because I, I thought, you know, when you talk about that, I'm not, I don't really track my numbers as good as I do. I actually, you know, looked at my sales one year and I was like, where did these clients come from? So um, I've tried about everything. I've tried open houses. I feel like I've done cold calling, but I feel very fortunate. A lot of my, um, you know, from being in business, I guess maybe those first three or four years, uh, we do get a lot of referrals. Um, we do get a lot of repeat 
business now that we do that. But before I just, you know, anybody that knows me, I like to talk. I never meet a stranger. There's just people I haven't met yet. So I have been, we actually were together one time and we got a client um, from Costco. We were checking out and um, we just were talking about real estate. So I think just talking, letting people know that you do real estate. I've been in a restaurant. It's really hard when you're sitting at a table trying to, you know, have a conversation and you hear the next table talking about real estate. Like, mm. oh, you know, keep tuned in to what you're, you know, but it's just, I feel like you, if you're doing real estate all the time, it's just in your world, you'll end up talking to it. But so um, we do do a little bit of marketing as far as like trying to be on social media. Um, but as far as like the traditional, I'm, my goal is to make Jenna a great agent. So I'm trying to, you know, have to do open houses and stuff. Um, but as far as like calling expireds and I don't really do that. I've tried that. And I didn't like it. So well, that's okay. You, you you're, you're, so yeah. I think letting people know, stay, you know, your sphere of influence. I can't tell you how that is really good. And one thing I do try to do is, um, I try to categorize my clients into like my top 100, top 50, top 25. And it's interesting because one of my clients, she's like in my top 25, I have never sold her house and she has um, not bought a house either from us, yeah. but I have, she has given me so much business. And I just, I think she called me for one of her friends that was looking for a house. So I've sold her sister house. I sold her sister's house. So one of her great friends house, and we're working with another client. So I try to treat them really well. So what was one that you did with the poll? Oh, we did a picture. We actually did like a photo shoot for our advertising. And so during COVID, we took a picture out in a swimming pool with our laptops. And we said, just want to let you know, we're still here and we're still working. And we sent that out for our, our pandemic marketing. And Campaign. Yeah. That's great. I think I saw that one, actually. I think I saw that one. That was great. I, I love it. Yeah, the um, um, it's it's good to mix like you know, and I know that uh, for me especially, you know, I've been in business for thirty eight years. I've been around since before lockboxes, before the internet, before uh, you know, I mean, just crazy stuff. And 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 so all these adjustments, like you just mentioned, Shauna, that you got to keep doing. But you take what what Jenna probably is really good at the social media, the um, you know, anything to do with the computer, all that kind of stuff, and you add that to what you like to do, which is talk and you know, be so social, and you put those two together. And that's a that's a winning combination. And what will happen is, you know, it'll wear it'll it'll um, you'll each get a little bit out of it too. So you'll expand your horizons as far as what you're comfortable doing. So that way, Jenna, like your your goal to make her a dynamite agent, I'm sure that's going to just rub off on her. I hope it does. I think you know that's one thing. Um, I talked with another. Uh, my sister in law actually does real estate with us. She's in a different office. And it was fun. I mean, you know, when you're a brand new agent, it's really hard. I think that mentoring, I wish they had an apprenticeship for when you started real estate. I think, you know, or starting on a team, I think that really helps. I didn't do that. You know, I was pretty much solo when it was hard, but I wasn't afraid to ask for help. And I, I ran into some great agents that were willing to share with me. So I'm always willing to help somebody, you know, I, you know, and with Berkshire, I really like is that, you know, if I have a question or there's a, a deal or I need to work up an addendum, I have met some great, you know, real estate agents that, you know, I could call. And I yeah. think that's it's our little family. I, I really like that. But um, I think that's really good for a new agent. To, it, really, you know, being it, it really is. Good, good, good. All right. So what's the goal for this year? Like, what did you got? What would you guys like to accomplish as far as? transactions and so forth what's your ultimate goal okay so i've kept my goals always really low over the years when i first started i was like if i could just do two sales a month and um or at least you know make a hundred thousand i was like good you know that's been my goal so i haven't really ever bumped those up too much but we have made the um chairman circle the last couple of years which is yeah. amazing because 2019 when you think that you know everything's gonna you know change so I do like being up on the board. I remember talking to Haiti um, and says, if I become a team, I'm never going to be on the board again. But, you know, those are word ceremonies. You know, it does give you a great feeling that you've done a really good job and you get to be up on the, um, you know, get an award for doing that. So as far as goals, um, I still, what did you think your goals were? I just, um, 
I mean, starting out trying to do it full time with kids, I'm happy with one closing a month. And, you know, with, with her help, it, it doesn't matter if it's my closing or her closing, just one a month is good for me. And, you know, I try to bring in business where I can. And I think we've always done really well. Just we set realistic goals and we've always exceeded those. We always try to do better. So I guess if you ask me what my goal would be, and I, I always want to try to do better each year, which I think I've been pretty good about doing that. So whatever I did last year, I try to do better. We're a little slow this year, you know, changing, you know, some of the things changing, but, um, you know, my goal is if I can do three closings a month, that's great. I was going to say, between, two, between, between the two of you, that's 36 a month. And then with, with the average sale price for today, that's uh, that's a decent, uh, in, that's not, that's a, that's a very decent income. It's extremely good right. in, in, um, in today's market, in today's world, I should say. You know, remember, I think it's, what is it, uh, 4% of the country makes 200000 or more. It's crazy. So 10%, 10, 11% makes 100000 or more. So with you guys, with your doing, that's really good being in the chairman's circle. So congratulations. That's great. Three closings a month is damn good. That's one. That's almost one a week. That's that's good. One week. Well, there's always room for improvement, right? <laughs> always, right? Yeah. Always there, I, no, I like that. I like that theory. There's always room for improvement. Like, mm-hmm. like four a month. Ooh, from 36 to 48. <laughs> that would be huge. And with real estate, it's really interesting because I know it's hard. I mean, you have to you have to you know be scheduled and be organized because sometimes you might do five a month or seven a month, and then sometimes you won't have one that you know sells. But hopefully, you don't do that. Usually, right. we've always been really good to have closings. We like closings. Closings are good. As a matter of fact, it's kind of like the finish line in real. Estate, right? <laughs> True. True. It's it's the finish line, yet it's the beginning at the same time because you keep in touch with them, you get refer, repeat and referral business right. from them if you're smart, which which goes into you know the VAC 2.0, the new one we had. You mentioned we're always changing things. Mm-hmm. That thing is pretty rock star as far as keeping you in touch with all your customers and clients. Mm-hmm. That's good. I mean, having our CRM. I mean, if you were to ask me, um, I remember from the very get going, that was something that was just you know pounded into me. You know, keep your CRM and. I think I'm like every other agent. You think you have a really good system and then you realize you don't have a good system. Um, so I've tried to keep a pretty good CRM. I mean, I still have, you know, write piece of papers and notes and stuff, but that's one thing I think Jen has got me is getting my systems, you know, set up. So when we do get a phone call, we have a, a book, we put their information in, uh, we've got like, you know, a checklist so that we can, you know, make sure we're following up, but we could do a little bit better. But like right now we just try to think like, we owe a couple lunches and um, follow up to a couple of our uh, clients that we will be doing this summer. So and that's always fun because I, I mean, that's one thing I really like. Um, most of our clients become our friends. I mean, just generally become our friends. We um, enjoy seeing, you know, what they've done to their homes or, you know, what's going on in their lives. And we've, I mean, get invited to like birthday parties and anniversaries. And I just really enjoy that because they do. It's a, Good. it's a, it's a, a, a customer service, but it's a friendship too. And um, I think that's true. And it's easier. It's like, I always tell her, I go, if I was to send Jenna out with buyers and I, I go, you need to come back and you need to tell me two or three things about them, you know, like what they're looking for, but, you know, tell me about, you know, do they have kids? Do they have a dog? You know, what, what are their hobbies? Because you spend so much time with buyers, you really should be, getting to know them a little bit. And it makes it easier when you're making those follow-up phone calls, if you actually know them, if you know them, or, you know, if there's something that you think is sort of cool that, you know, you can invite, you know, tell them about or inform them. And I can't remember who it was that told me a long time ago, it's God gave us two ears and one mouth. Make sure that you're using your ears twice as much as you are in your mouth, but, um, you know, listen. That's the proper reason, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, and, and you should know everything about your clients and customers because um, that's what the fiduciary responsibility is all about. You're supposed to put their own needs in front of your own and so forth. So mm-hmm. how could you unless you know the whole story, right? Mm-hmm. So good, good job. And I think the fact that you become friends with everybody says a lot about your customer service, your care for your clients, and so forth. So which leads me into my last question. So as a top producing team like you guys are, what would be the you know in this market? What would be three the three most important things you tell people to focus on in order to either, as a new agent, come out of the gate hot, or as an experienced agent, take it to the next level? 
So I am one, I like writing. If you saw my office or my house, I always like having like little things around, you know, little um, to be positive. But um, I think that having the best customer service, it will help you have great client relationships. So that's really always remember that. Um, and with that, um, I would just say communication. I know that's another one I say communication is key, but um, yeah, I, one thing, and I don't know how to actually put this in a, but you know, whether they are a first time buyer or a seasoned seller, you know, it's a lot of money that they're spending. And so they really need to know that they've got somebody that's got their back and that, you know, is going to actually really care for them. So, you know, we, we get busy, but I've always just, you know, time is of the essence with these clients, especially if they're trying to get a, a house in this. So I guess that would be, I guess I'm all over the place, but I got a whole bunch. Yeah. So well, 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 dynamite customer service. And I would say dynamite mm -hmm. customer service through massive over communicate rather than under communicate. That's a good one. How about you, Jenny? You want to throw one? Well, go ahead. Um, my, my biggest thing, just set a schedule and, and stick to it. So like I said, for those agents out there that are trying to do this, that have kids or family, you know, I can't start my day at six o'clock in the morning because I have kids that I'm getting up and ready to go to different schools. So my day starts pretty much at, you know, nine o'clock when I drop my, my last child off for school and it's a little different in the summer, but she knows to, you know, at, at nine o'clock I can start doing real estate. You know, if I have appointments, I set them while they're at school. And I just try to stick to that as close as I possibly can. That's great. Yes, especially a mom of three, you know, you have to be scheduled. People, you don't realize, I mean, you know, for you, for you to be able to do this, your time blocking schedule has to be really down to the, down to the minute. Otherwise, you're never going to pull this off. So, yeah, I, th I think it just goes to show, you know, how much can be done if you're completely scheduled out too. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's hard. Like I, I mean, if I really want to do lunch with a family member, it sounds so terrible. I have to, I have to you know, schedule them in. I know that sounds terrible sometimes, but you know, and that's one thing I, you know, make sure, I mean, that's as an agent, um, you have to, you can get burned out really quickly if you do not take time and schedule time for those important things to do. I, I schedule caught, time for your family as well. Caught, so. caught myself doing that as an agent to just make sure, you know, you are scheduling. Of course, there's always something to be doing in real estate, but make sure you are taking that time. Or I remember my husband would go out to lunch with me, but he would make me leave my phone in the car. Do you know how hard that is for an agent <laughs> to leave your phone? Yeah. I mean, it's a lifeline. <laughs> But, you know, sometimes you just... Good for him. No, I think that's yeah. great. You, you, you couldn't do it in July or August here, though, because your phone would be fried by the time you get back oh, in the car. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's a good thing. <laughs> I used to do that. In, in, when I was in New England, I used to leave my phone in my car all the time going to the appointments. I tried that once. When I first moved here, I left it in, and I was like, mm -hmm. oh, my God. And my phone had never oh, said, yeah. you know, too hot, off. You know, I've mm -hmm. never seen that before yeah. when I moved here. All right. Any final, okay. So I, you know, we were right at the time. So I just wanted to say thank you very much for taking your time out. Any final words you want to leave these lovely people? I just think that every day is a new day to do something great. So, you know, as, as real estate agents, we get really busy and sometimes, you know, you got great days and things happen and um, just every day is a new day to make it great. So that would just be, and be positive, you know, have a great mindset that, you know, you can do it. If you put your mind to it, you can do it. Yeah. I would say I would say never stop learning. There are so many yeah. classes out there that you can take that will brush up on your skills. So mm -hmm. um, never stop learning. The more knowledge you have, the the more confidence you're going to have, and the better that you're going to do. True. Sure. I love it. Knowledge is power. And yes, start every day positive and ready to rock. That's the way to be. I really want to thank you both, Sean and Janet, for taking your time out today. Thank you very much. All right, we'll do this again, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Bye, everybody. Bye.